Hey guys, welcome back. So, this old ukulele cost $30 when I got it, I don't know, 10 years ago. It was my first ukulele, and I have played this thing to absolute death. It is by no stretch of the imagination good, but what if I could have made myself a better ukulele, one that didn't, you know? What if I could have just printed out a fully functioning, you know, okay quality ukulele? Well, today, I'm going to attempt to do just that thanks to this 3D printable travel ukulele created by user Avocado Boat on Thingiverse. Not only does this thing allegedly cost under $10 to make, but it's apparently totally playable. So all of that sounds good to me. So let's build this thing and find out if it's all it's cracked up to be. But first, real quick, if you could do me a huge favor and hit that thumbs up button, lets me know how I'm doing and helps get the video out to more people. Thanks a bunch. All right, so this print was pretty simple to pull off. It is only five pieces of printed material. And of course I got a little carried away and I went ahead and printed two of them. I couldn't help myself, I was having too much fun. And also I wanted to experiment with a bunch of different types of filaments. So the five parts that you print out are the body, the neck of the ukulele, the bridge of the ukulele, the nut, to go up top and a truss rod. That's the thing that sold me on this print is the fact that they thought to include and engineered a truss rod to fit in there. I'll, I'll show you later, but that's someone who knows what they're doing, building in that type of functionality. And there's more than that. We'll get to it. There are actually uh, a few other add-ons that you gotta buy separately to build this, but they're all covered in that $10 price and I'll do a full breakdown at the end. But as far as the filaments go, this is Paramount Mid-Century Teal PETG. This is Pryline Wood PLA. This is just a generic color changing silk PLA. If you use this stuff, you know it's hard to find a print big enough to make the colors actually change. So happy to report it works with this. And just to spice it up, I used some Rock PLA from Hatchbox to try a different material with the neck. As you can see, these all look pretty good. The models print really well. You print the neck on its side and everything else you just print normally and you use between 30 and 40 percent infill depending on how strong you want it to be i went with 40 percent for everything except for the petg there i felt a little more comfortable going with 30 percent so i've got to make some decisions i'm going to go with a wood neck and a wood body because it's printed in petg and is therefore going to be stronger and also there's just something about this color combo that I really like. But hey, don't let me tell you what to do. You like the color combo, do you think the other one would have been better? If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear them. The model does print with its own supports and I think they break off pretty easily, let's see. Yeah, that's no trouble at all. It is intended for you to print the neck on its side. I ultimately chose not to go that route and I did that because I wanted to mess with the frets. This is what they look like as intended, totally playable, totally normal, but I really wanted a contrast with the frets. So I did some experimenting to try to get them to be like silver in color. So I actually went ahead and did some like silver leafing there. And I also messed around with foil tape just to try to give the frets, you know, a little extra oomph. I wanted to take it in a slightly different direction. And what I actually did, I wanted these frets to be with this filament. So what I did is I positioned the model in my modeling software with the backside facing the build plate and put a raft and my own supports in there and printed it so that the fretboard was level. And then what I did is I paused the print and I swapped out the filament and printed them on there. But now enough about me and my weird modifications to STL files. Let us get to the assembly. So this should just all fit together pretty simply. Fits on there just fine. And we get the truss rod. And now for the nut and bolt that go in up at the top here, I'm using these nut and bolt combo screw kits that I got from the local hardware store. These are number four, 40, one and a quarter inch screws. The directions call for an M4 screw because the designer is European, I'm assuming. And when I asked for that at the hardware store, they looked at me like I had two heads and went, son, do you know you live in Texas? So no luck there, but these should fit the bill. As this tightens up, we should see the truss rod pulling tension on the neck and kind of clamping the whole thing together. It does appear to be the case. So next I'll pop the nut in. Oh, there we go. Not too shabby. Next, we are going to introduce the electronic part of this build, and that is this. 
a cheap piezo pickup. Many crystals in nature emit what is called the piezo effect, and it is when they are put under pressure or experience vibration, they actually give off an electric signal. There exist now man-made iterations of these crystals, and they're very cheap to make, and they're just packed into little bars and discs, and you can put them on your instruments, and they output an electrical audio signal. And I really like this design, it just continues to impress me. This groove right at the bottom, right beneath the bridge, is designed to house a pickup just like this. All right, so this little hole that the wire is supposed to feed through is actually a little bit too large for this particular piezo pickup. I think it might be designed to have just a wire run through and then you kind of solder it. So, much better. Now it is time to attach our tuners. These are a specific kind of traveling instrument tuner and they're unique because they affix straight in from the sides. If you take a look at a typical tuner, see this one is completely straight and then this one kind of makes a 90 degree turn. So we want these tuners to go straight in. Well, I'm feeling awful silly. I'm pretty positive that these washer type things go on the inside. One sec. That looks and feels really solid. The next thing we need is strings. These are freely available online for very cheap, just ukulele nylon strings. But I figured why buy new strings when I can recycle the old? Cause I don't play this thing anymore. You can tell uh, I sure do like to play me a G. This is probably a lot easier with new straight strings. All right, we got one. Well, I got some good news and I got some bad news. The good news is we have the ukulele strung up. The bad news is, try as I might, I can't get the thing in tune. And I was trying and trying and trying to figure out what went wrong. And then I looked at the neck and realized that I messed up. I tried to get creative and I really like the look, but it is ever so slightly bowed and is therefore not going to be in tune. But now you know, definitely print it on its side not face up or any other kind of way because unless you print it perfectly it's gonna mess with the tuning so i'm gonna switch it out with this so let's go ahead and get that taken care of all right much better so yeah i got this thing all tuned up it's pretty tricky to tune but yeah it's not not the worst ukulele i have ever used in my life So yeah, there you have it. It's pretty decent little ukulele. Very pleasant surprise. I didn't really know what to expect, but doesn't feel like it's gonna fall apart on me and it plays just fine. I don't know. I, I don't know if I would recommend it as like a first ukulele for someone to learn on, but it's definitely a capable little instrument. Wouldn't turn my nose up at owning one. So I don't know if you got a 3D printer and you feel like making a ukulele, this one gets my seal of approval. It feels sturdy, it plays. Oh, oh, as far as all the parts go, I got all of my parts off of Amazon, which is not the cheapest route. The cheapest route I actually found is either eBay or my personal favorite, AliExpress. So I ran all the numbers and in total, I paid around about $26 for all the different parts that you have to get extra for this. However, if I were to buy those same parts from AliExpress, it would be under $10 strings included and shipping included. I will have both of those options, whether you want Amazon for the immediacy or AliExpress for the price, linked down in the description if you're interested, there you go. So without any further ado, let's do a little demo. Fair warning, I am not Israel Kamakawa'ile, but I will do my best. Pretty quiet, pretty quiet. Not the worst. <laughs> well, 
Well, it started in tune anyway. But hey, if you're looking for a fun weekend project, maybe you'll have better luck than I did, even though I don't think I had bad luck at all. This thing is a blast, and I'm really glad I made it and I own it now, so maybe I can get it to be even more in tune if I really put my mind to it. Whatever the case may be, I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment. Let me know what other weird projects you might want to see me build in the future. And I got some other videos popping up on the sides if you want to check those out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.